107 and welcome to another uh oh this is not the voice quality you are accustomed to in my DIY videos is it hang on how about now hey there this is handyman 007 and welcome to a feature video where I show you how I record and remaster my voiceovers for my DIY videos do you want to learn how you can transform your own voice in audacity to level up your videos, school projects, training materials, and presentations? And give your audio a studio quality despite the background noise and regardless of your microphone at the time of your recording. Are you ready? Here we go. I don't want to waste your time, so before we jump into it, let me get a few things out of the way. First. While Audacity is a free, open-source, cross-platform audio software, it is not a magic bullet to solve any and all your audio editing requirements. For example, it only runs on Windows, Mac, Linux, and a few other operating systems. It cannot be installed and used on an Android or iOS device. So if you edit your audio on your smartphone, this isn't the solution nor the video for you. Second, any audio editing software has its limits. What would help you and the software in post-production editing is capturing a decent recording in the first place, such as recording in a space where there's little to no background noise, learning the optimal settings of your microphone, having the right distance between your mic and your mouth, and speaking clearly and audibly. Third, what I am about to share with you are my personal settings and preferences in Audacity to clean and enhance my voiceover recordings so I can incorporate them later into my home DIY videos. Now, some of my settings may apply to your purposes, but some may not. For example, if you are doing song covers or playing musical instruments, you might have a different preference. You are free to explore the other many features and filters of Audacity and watch more extensive tutorials out there. Fourth, I am no expert in Audacity, and even if I have been using it for half a year now, I am still continuously learning. If you need help using the software, I have included the link to the official Audacity website in the description below. This is where you can download the latest version of Audacity. At the time of this recording, I am using Audacity version 2.4.1. From the site, you can also access the help menu, find other relevant resources, and even join the Audacity forum. While you're at it, you might also want to consider supporting the team of volunteers behind Audacity. You can either make a donation through the site or volunteer yourself as a developer, translator, beta tester, and other roles. And with that, let me now take you to the Audacity user interface and walk you through the steps of my typical voice recording and remastering process. In any new Audacity project, the first thing that I do is to prepare the workspace, starting with choosing a project rate of 48,000 Hz instead of the default 44,100 Hz. This essentially allows Audacity to capture a wider range of sound and preserve the audio quality when I export the project to my preferred audio file format later. Next, I verify if my preferred microphone for this project is the one selected. Audacity auto-detects all active audio input devices such as my laptop's built-in microphone and my Plantronics headset. For this project, I'm going to use my BM800 condenser microphone to record my voiceover so I make sure that it's the one selected. For recording channel, there are only two options, mono or stereo. Since I am just going to record my voice on a single microphone, I make sure that mono is selected. After watching this video, look up why it makes perfect sense to record in mono for voiceovers and when should you actually record in stereo. So for my voiceovers, I always choose mono. Just like with audio input devices, Audacity also auto-detects all my active audio output devices, like my laptop's built-in speakers and Plantronics headset. I always use my Plantronics headset as my playback monitor to review my edits because the sound quality is way better than my built-in speakers. However, if you have a good set of external speakers hooked up, you can use that too. For your chosen mic's recording volume, you can move the slider from 0 to 1. I don't have a recommended number for you here because it really depends on the power of your mic and your voice. Just remember, the higher you go or if you max it out to 1, the more sensitive your mic becomes to not only your voice but also the ambient sound and background noise around you and the higher the chance of your voice clipping. I'll explain clipping later on. For my BM800, I learned that the sweet spot is anywhere from 0.75 to 0.90. As for the playback volume, it has a similar slider and I just set that to 0.75.
Anything higher than this, I personally found too loud for my ears during playback, probably because my Plantronics headset speakers are powerful enough. And to complete my setup, I click on the mic channel meter on top so I can see a visual representation of the level of loudness my mic is picking up. Right now, it's just picking up negative 36 decibels, which is likely the wall fan above my head in a nearby AC behind my work area. Anyway, while I'm actively recording, I keep an eye on this to regulate my voice and not hit the max which is zero on the far right. Whenever it hits zero, the captured audio tends to clip and becomes harder to edit later. Finally, I close all my other open programs. This ensures that most of my computer's processing power and RAM are available to Audacity during recording, editing, and export to preserve the quality of my project. With that, I'm ready to hit the record button and start speaking into the mic. Note that right after I click the record button, I will wait for at least 10 to 15 seconds before actually speaking and will hit the stop button 5 to 10 seconds after I have completed my script. And you'll understand why that's important when we get to the editing part. Ready? Here goes. Let's all listen to this final version. Does my audio quality now sound better than before cleaning it up in Audacity? Does yours? This is Handyman007 and you can do this. So now, I'm gonna jump to the start of the track and play it back to check if I didn't miss anything from my script. You could also tell I was speaking deliberately slow, so I minimize mispronouncing words. If I did commit errors, I would re-record a portion of the script, or sometimes even the entire script, if I'm not too happy. Now let's listen. Let's all listen to this final version. Does my audio quality now sound better than before cleaning it up in Audacity? Does yours? This is Handyman007, and you can do this. Notice there's a lot of hissing and background noise regardless if I'm silent or speaking. So my first order of business is to reduce that background noise. And this is where our first 10 to 15 seconds of silence becomes handy. I select this section which I was counting on to have captured my breathing, the humming of the AC, wind from the wall fan, a tap on my table, a squeak from my chair, distant voices in the house, a neighbor's dog barking, or even a passing vehicle all of which I obviously consider as noise. While the section is selected, I go to the Effect menu and select Noise Reduction. Noise reduction always involve a two-step process. Step 1 is telling Audacity what I consider noise, which I just did. Then I hit Get Noise Profile to verify my selection. Nothing will happen yet. The next thing I do is select the entire track, then go back to Noise Reduction. Step 2 is telling Audacity all the audio I want filtered, which I just did. Here, I just leave the default values. I can hit OK right away or preview the result of the first 5 seconds of the track. I hear almost nothing? Good. I hit OK and Audacity immediately applies the noise reduction filter. See the waveform in this first 10 seconds? It's now flat. Let's listen to a few seconds. I hear nothing. Good. Now I can select this section with my mouse and delete it. Now let's listen to my voice with reduced background noise. Let's all listen to this final version. Does my audio quality now sound better than before cleaning it up in Audacity? Does yours? This is Handyman007 and you can do this. It now sounds cleaner without the disruptive hissing and background noise, but it does sound flat. I jump back to the beginning and select the entire track. Then I go to Effect and select Graphic EQ. I click Manage, Factory Presets, and choose Bass Boost.
What Bass Boost does is increase the low range of my voice. Let's all listen to this final version. See how the waveform became a bit thicker? Typically, I'm done with graphic EQ at this point, but for this exercise, let me show you how you can increase your voice's high range. Same path as before, but this time, I choose treble boost. It will increase my voice's high range on top of the bass boost I did earlier. Can you hear the difference after applying the EQ filters? Let's all listen to this final version. Does my audio quality now sound better? Here's before. Let's all listen to this final version. And here's after. Let's all listen to this final version. Okay, so I have made my voice sound more dynamic, but certain parts are either too soft or too loud. This is where the compressor filter comes in. Here, I just leave the default settings and hit OK. But if you somehow mess this up and move the sliders, you can always revert to the default settings like so. Audio compression is the process of lessening the dynamic range between the loudest and quietest parts of an audio signal. In simple terms, it boosts the quieter sounds and attenuates or reduces the louder sounds to kind of make them meet halfway. While the waveform does look thicker now, I do see a red line here which signifies an audio clipping. In the simplest sense, audio clipping is a form of waveform distortion. When an amplifier is pushed beyond its maximum limit, it goes into overdrive. Clipping will include distortions that may sound like metallic excessive noise, cracking, and knocking. You commonly hear this whenever someone shouts or talks too loud into a microphone. Let's all listen to this final version. Does my audio quality now sound better than before cleaning it up in Audacity? I fixed this using limiter. The limiter is located just below the high pass filter. Apologies, while I was recording my screen, I didn't notice I had a black overlay blocking the entire bottom edge of my screen. Anyway, in the limiter dialog box, there are different types of limiters. I just choose soft limit and leave the default values alone. I click OK and the clipping red line vanishes because some of the waveform sections have been adjusted. A limiter will almost completely prevent any additional gain above a set threshold. Let's all listen to this final version. Does my audio quality now sound better? At this point, after applying equalization, compressor, and limiter to the track, it also increased the volume of the background noise and hissing back to the range of human hearing. So I'm going to apply noise reduction again, and this time, select the last 5 to 10 seconds of the track to get my noise profile. Since I no longer need the last few seconds, I can now delete it. Let's all listen to this final version. Does my audio quality now sound better than before cleaning it up in Audacity? With the entire track selected, I apply the Normalize filter. I just accept the default values here and click OK. Let's listen now. Let's all listen to this final version. Does my audio quality now sound better than before cleaning it up in Audacity? Because my voice has a rather high pitch, which even I myself can't stand listening to for prolonged periods of time, Audacity allows me to modify it through the Change Pitch filter. You can move the slider to the right to increase your pitch. Let's all listen to this final version. Or move it to the left to decrease your pitch. Let's all listen to this final version. This 
Also, if you messed up the values here, you can always revert to the default setting of zero or no change at all. Let's all listen to this final version. Personally, decreasing my pitch to negative 6% makes my voice deep enough to mask that shrill quality, but not too much that it sounds unnatural. Let's all listen to this final version. Does my audio quality now sound better? Okay, so now I need to speed up my voice because as you might remember, I deliberately spoke very slow during the recording step so I could pace myself and avoid tripping over my tongue. What I use here is change tempo. Some people use change speed, but they end up sounding like chipmunks. On the other hand, change tempo allows me to speed up or slow down the pace of my voice without changing my pitch. Moving the slider to the right speeds up the tempo. Let's all listen to this final version. Does my audio quality now sound better than before cleaning it? And to the left slows down the tempo. Let's all listen to this final version. Either way, the pitch is preserved. The percent change I choose here really depends on how fast or slow I want my voice to be, which I base on the scenes of whatever specific home DIY video I'm doing. For this exercise, I'm going to speed up my voice by 23%. Let's all listen to this final version. Does my audio quality now sound better? A final touch that I do is inspect the lulls in between waveforms and delete some sections accordingly to make my voice sound more conversational. Let's all listen to this final version. Does my audio quality now sound better? When I'm satisfied with everything, I export my project not as an MP3 file, but as a WAV file. Because unlike MP3, WAV is a lossless audio file format, which means it keeps the sound quality of my project 100% intact. Then I assign a file name and save it in one of my project folders. I get prompted to update the file's metadata tags, but I just leave this all blank and click OK. Now, as for the Audacity project itself, normally I will just delete it because I've already exported the WAV file from it, which I will then import and embed on the audio track of Shotcut, which by the way is the video editor I use for whatever DIY video I'm working on. However, in this situation, I have one final use for this specific Audacity project. Here we go. Let's all listen to this final version. Does my audio quality now sound better than before cleaning it up in Audacity? Does yours? This is Handyman007 and you can do this.